Friday, the 28th of July, when IBC's ICT manager Chris Msando was reported missing just nine days to the general election. He would later be found dead in a thicket in Kiambu a day later, his body showing signs of torture. Chris Msando's murder was both shocking and quizzical. Who would want him out of the way that bad? To date, his murder is yet to be solved. <laughs> now, the general election took place on August 8th with a voter turnout of what IBC stated to be 79%. On the 10th of August, provisional results released by the IBC put Kenyatta ahead by 54.2% to Odinga's 44%. On the evening of 11th of August, IBC declared incumbents Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto as president-elect and deputy president-elect, respectively. Let's revisit those events. Now, having fulfilled the requirement by law and having garnered 8,203,290 votes, representing 54.27% of the votes and 25% in 35 counties, I therefore wish to declare Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta I, said, I wish to declare Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta as president elect and Honorable William Ruto as the deputy president elect. When IBC announced Uhuru Kenyatta winner of the presidential election on August 11th, protests erupted on some of the opposition's strongholds in Kisumu and Nairobi's Kibra and Madare. Some of the protests turned violent and deadly, with the Kenyan National Commission on Human Rights reporting that at least 24 people were killed in the protests. Let's revisit those incidents. <laughs> Under the cover of tears and tear gas that was flowing as police fought to contain Mathari slums, nine-year-old Stephanie Moranya Rangi, the second child of Mr. Wycliffe Mokaya, was on the balcony of their house with other children when tragedy struck this morning. <laughs> Ni kama anaweka sigari na anawapea ruhusa ya kupiga ya kupiga mtio yote risasi kwa The locals early in the morning were fighting over the body of the deceased with the police blocking the law enforcers from picking the body of the 9 year old Moroa the accused police officers of intention to conceal the truth and only allowed a red cross ambulance to pick the body after the arrival of KTN news Kuna police walikuwa wanataka kuchukua hiyo mwili by force ndio uchunguzi sifanyike ndio wananchi wa Matara wakawafungia ndani ndio wakakataa mwili wesi chukuliwa kabla watu wa press hawachakuchi Serikali ambayo imefanya hili jambo iwajibike and we want to get the answers to the bottom of the answers of this problem because at wesi kubali watu wetu wa uwawe just because of simple politics huyu mtoto hakupiga kura ajaenda mahali popote and we are not going to accept that nonsense and and especially from the minister and judge Matiang in a new twist, Dr. Fred Matiangi will hours later tell the nation that no innocent Kenyan had been shot by police. In fact, according to Matiangi and in his own words, police are not using and have not used live bullets on Kenyans, saying all those shot were criminals. Police have not used any disproportionate force against any protesters anywhere in this country. I can tell that, I can look you in the face and tell you anyone who's making that claim is plainly lying. The police have not used live bullets on any peaceful protesters. For now, the family of Stephanie Moroa is seeking nothing but justice for the class four pupil of Mathare Primary School who came to town to shape a good life only to die by the gun. Serikali, watu wa Mathare Nuti, tusaidiana. Tuwana vire hii mwiri natoka hapa, paka yende nyumbani. Born kilometers away in Manga Isecha in Kisi, this is a story of an innocent schoolgirl, a disputed vote, a murder most foul, and a quest for justice. Brian Obuya, KTN News. 
The National Super Alliance disputed the results even before they were officially announced, claiming that the Commission's IT system had been hacked and that Ryla's votes were systematically reduced while Uhuru's were inflated in an elaborate plan to guarantee victory to the incumbent. Democratic elections are based on the basic principle that the sovereign are the people. It is not a show for those who stand for election or those who run it. Some persons have taken an audacious attempt to overrule the power of Kenyans to choose their leaders. Hackers gained entry into our election database through the identity of Chris Musando, is delayed, who was executed barely a week ago into the account of the of Mr. Chebukati, the chairperson. The system, whether it's hacked or not, those are aspersions which have been cast, those are allegations. As a commission, we shall have our own investigative system to kick in. We shall come up with a methodology as to finding out whether or not those claims are correct. And several other claims were made as well. So we, we shall go into that and find out whether or not those claims are true. But we have faith in the system. It's the same system we used for verification. It's the same system we used for candidate management. It's the same system we are using now for, for the rest of the processes. So yes, if there are claims, we shall look into them. But as for now, I cannot say whether or not the system has been hacked. A week after the vote, Odinga announced that he would challenge the results in Kenya's Supreme Court. Raila Odinga's petition against Uhuru Kenyatta was four-pronged. Preparation for election by IABC, unlawful campaign by Uhuru, manipulation of votes after the count, and irregular tally and transmission and declaration of results. On 18th August, a week after IEBC had declared Uhuru Kenyatta president-elect, NASA moved to the Supreme Court of Kenya to challenge the verdict. In its sworn affidavit, NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga and running mate Kalonzo Musioka claimed IEBC chairman Wafula Chebukati announced the final presidential results without 11,000 form 34S. NASA claimed the missing forms accounted for over 7 million votes. The opposition further argued that some of the Forms 34As and Form 34Bs were fake for they lacked security features from the Dubai-based manufacturing company Algorea Printing Farm. In its defense, IABC argued that the final announcement was made after collecting and aggregating results from Forms 34Bs in 291 constituencies, including the diaspora. Chebukati said he never altered results from constituencies and polling stations. In his response, Uhuru Kenyatta said Raila did not demonstrate discrepancies in figures to invalidate his win. Analyzing the results from when it starts to the end, it gives a very clear straight line, which is a statistical impossibility. This, this petition is a science fiction, my lord. It's a science fiction which will only interest directors and actors in Hollywood. Raila's legal team wanted the court to relook at the issue of rejected votes which, according to NASA, accounted for 2.6% of the total votes. Raila argued results displayed on the IBC's public portal showed rejected votes totaled 403,503. But in its affidavit, IBC insisted the number of rejected votes was 81,685. In the 2013 petition, the Supreme Court held that rejected votes cannot be counted in arriving at the 50% plus one vote constitutional threshold required to determine the winner. If a proper scrutiny is carried out as the court has ordered. Raila argued that the inaccuracies and inconsistencies affected and accounted for at least 5 million votes. The other area of contention was to do with inconsistencies in ballots for the six elective positions, which showed a gap of 570,000 votes between the presidential vote and other elective positions. Where a voter collects the six ballots. Yes. Because we... The yes. assumption is we will be given all six. Yes, you're given all six. And you want to vote for only one candidate. Yes. Where do the other five ballot papers go? It's a very simple question. Even having been given the six, and even with the color coding that the ballot boxes have and the ballots themselves have, 
room is still created for your, what your leadership correctly called the spray ballot, which is a correct ballot placed in the wrong box. Now, when you look at the regulations and you retire to do your ruling, you will find that those stray ballots are kept in a separate uh, um, envelope by themselves, according to the rules. You've been given six, yes. but you have elected to use only one. Yes. That leaves you with five. Yes. What we are asking, yes. where do those five go? How are they accounted for? It's a simple question. Oh, yes. And They're not stray. You vote. You vote for one and vote for the second and vote for the third. You have six. Yes. NASA said the election was not conducted in accordance with the Constitution and Election Act and that some Forms 34As and Forms 34Bs were never signed by party agents. IEBC argued it complied with the Constitution and election laws. The Commission said the Forms used were not forgeries and that the polls were free, fair and verifiable. You'll find that nearly all of them are not standardized. They differ from constituency to constituency. And there are others like Madeira constituency where the heading of the form is written by hand, Madeira. Even without any defense, there is nothing they can prove in this, my lord. It's allegation of rumors. It's allegation of yeah, political hyperbole. Uhuru's legal team argued all the party agents signed the forms and NASA provided no proof to show Forms 34As and Forms 34Bs were forged. It was Uhuru's contention that the election complied with the constitution and sovereign will of the people prevailed. During the submissions, Raila argued President Uhuru Kenyatta violated provisions of Elections Act by threatening public officers and using cabinet secretaries to campaign for him. In its defense, IABC argued it wrote to the Director of Public Prosecution in regard to the alleged threats and intimidation for action. Uhuru denied threatening and intimidating chiefs. He told the court, he merely told the chiefs not to engage in campaigns since they were public officers. On cabinet secretary's involvement in politics, Uhuru argued CSSs can engage in campaigns since they are political appointees and not public officers. Patrick Amimo, KTA News. Form 34As are brought before the court and 34Bs together with the transactions through transmission that were done electronically. If they are brought before this court, then this court will be able to verify whether that election was transparent, credible, and accountable. My Lord, I would say that uh, the attempt to try and say that we have no time what was this technology all about? It was for purposes of ensuring that the election is not an election on the day of election. On the 1st of September 2017, the Supreme Court of Kenya made a historic verdict by annulling the presidential election. Kenya became the first country in Africa and the fourth in the entire world to annul a presidential election after Austria, Maldives and Ukraine. The decision shocked some in Kenya and was seen by many as a step forward for democracy in the country because it appeared to set an example of judicial independence. Let's go back to this historic day in the country. Shortly after 11 a.m., the Supreme Court's six-judge bench made their way to the court amid anxiety across the country. It was judgment day on the fate of the country's biggest political office, a presidential election petition filed by NASA Supremo Raila Odinga against President Uhuru Kenyatta's IBC declared win. The biggest announcement came. A declaration is hereby issued that the presidential election held on 8th August 2017 was not conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the applicable law rendering the declared results invalid, null, and void. Number two, a declaration is hereby issued that the third respondent was not validly elected, uh, declared as the president elect, and that the declaration is invalid, null, and void. The highest court in the land made three determinations that saw President Uhuru Kenyatta's win nullified.
The decision of the court is that the first respondent failed, neglected, or refused to conduct the presidential election in a manner consistent with the dictates of the Constitution and inter alia, the election act, chapter seven of the laws of Kenya. Number two, as to whether there were irregularities and illegalities committed in the conduct of the 2017 presidential elections, the court was satisfied that the first respondent committed irregularities and illegalities inter alia in the transmission of results, particulars, and the, the substance of which will be given in the detailed and the recent judgment of the court. However, this was a majority decision of four judges from the six-judge bench. Two judges, Susanna Njoki Ndungu and Jackton Bomo Juang, had a dissenting opinion. I respectfully disagree with the decision of the majority. <laughs> And in accordance with Section 26.2 of the Supreme Court Act, I will issue my full dissenting judgment within 21 days. I would dismiss in its entirety the petition which came up before us as it was devoid of requisite supporting evidence, just as it did not rest upon the pillars of the Constitution, the ordinary law, or the pertinent elements inherent in the configuration of a democratic election. And with that, the final orders were made. An order is hereby issued directing the first respondent to organize and conduct a fresh presidential election in strict conformity with the Constitution and the applicable election laws within 60 days of the determination under Article 143, 143 of the Constitution. Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga's message was explicit. Election is not an event. It is a process from the beginning to the end. NASA's lead counsel, Senator James Orengo, who assembled Raila Odinga's legal team of more than 20 lawyers, expressed his satisfaction with the determination. Today, again, our petitioners have, have accepted the decision of the court. As wise as the court was in 2013, the court is as wise as, as it was then, and therefore, we accept the decision of the court. President Uhuru Kenyatta's lead counsel, Fred Ngatia, was conspicuously missing when the sitting began, prompting Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi to step forward. My client, who has won this election by a majority of 1.4 million, wants to see in your judgment how the irregularities you have alleged to have affected the result will obliterate that 1.4 million. NASA principal Zeraila Odinga, his running mate Kalonzo Musioka, Msalia Mdavadi, and Moses Wetangula were in court, but Isaac Kruto was once again absent. The decision by the Supreme Court to nullify the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta is a landmark ruling that for the first time in Africa, a sitting president's election has been nullified. Duncan Haimba, KTN News, Nairobi. Pengine mungu alikuwa tu na sababu ya vile ambavyo kumeeda. Wacha tuitikia lakini 
tuko na uchungu fanya kumeendelea sisi hatujafurahia kamwe sisi watu wanaivasha kwa mwisho wa kodi wenye ameamua tumeshukuru sana wenye ile kuangua jetu ya Kenya tumeshukuru Thank Maraka for having broken that uh, that monotony that has been there ya watu kuiba kura. Round hii tunapoenda katika uchaguzi tutoke kwa wingi, tutoke kwa numbers, tupige kura. Niposa baba Raila Amolo Odinga atangaze kama mshindi. Sasa tutarudia nini? Tutarudia uchaguzi. Koti kiamua imeamua. We want to express our sincere bitterness. Maraga amefanya vibaya sana. Kwa sababu kwa hii nchi yetu ya Kenya tuko na amani na tukiataka amani. Aku aku akuogea mambo ya bao inafaa, ameogea mambo ya bao si ya ukweli. Tumepata uhuru tutapiga kura tutapiga kura tunataka kura zipiwe wa Kenya tupate haki yetu this ruling is historical in the history of the country actually in the continent we have never seen a presidential election overturned but also Kenya being a democratic country we appreciate the judiciary's uh, verdict mimi nafurahia kwa sababu bila ya koti imeamua kurudia uzaguzi ndio mzuri. Na sisi tuko tayari kwa sababu wale wananchi walipiga kura tapiga tu. Kurudia na kufanywa uzaguzi kwa na watu. Tuko tayari. Tuko tayari. Kile kitu ambacho nataka niseme ni kwamba kila kila mtu lazima ajue siku za mwizi ni 40. Mwambie mama, mwambie. Na siku yake ya 40 imefika. Unaweza kununua kila kitu. Lakini hukumu ambao ni ya Mungu peke yake na iliyo ya kweli na akatumia majaji wake kumdhihirisha huwezi kuinunua We are very much disappointed on 8th of August Kenyan voted of Holme for Uhuru Kenyatta Hiyo kati haikufanya mzuri kwa sababu wajikodi walisagwana na sasa tuko mbele hata sisi tunaendelea na kazi shule imefunguliwa na hakuna watoto watarudi manyumbani na hakuna siku hiyo wanasema hatutarudia kwa hivyo wajiko walisagwana wagojea miaka 5